Yo, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to basically do a quick dive of HTML. This is a JavaScript series, so I know, like, what are we talking about HTML for? But JavaScript and HTML are highly integrated. So if you're working with web pages, you can't really have one without the other. So this is going to be your HTML crash course, just to give you the main essentials you need to start working with web pages. Now, inside of our JavaScript, we can basically just get rid of all this stuff. We're not gonna be needing that, and if we do, eh, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so let's just start fresh. Inside of index.html, the only thing we have is the body and the paragraph. Now, before I enlighten your souls with quality HTML tutorials, you need to check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. Alright, so this video is going to be giving you the prereqs for HTML, then we'll touch on CSS, and then we'll talk about integrating JavaScript into it all. So those are the three pieces. HTML is your structure. What pieces we want in our web page. The CSS is the styling. We don't actually have any CSS here, and that's fine. We'll get into that. Lastly, we have the JavaScript, which is the functionality. Now, if you need a good illustration, imagine we're building a house. HTML is the walls, the doors, the cabinets, basically the structure of your house. The CSS is the design, what size windows you want, the color, the shape, all that junk. JavaScript is the functionality, so this allows the windows to open, the doors to open, and the cabinets to move. So hopefully that illustration helped. Probably didn't, but that's okay. So let's start from the beginning. HTML. Now we start with this doc type HTML at the top with this exclamation mark. It's basically a way to tell the browser we're using HTML5. Everything goes inside of these HTML tags. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is broken up into a bunch of elements. So an element consists of an opening tag, some stuff, and a closing tag. So let's look at the first element, the head element. We have the opening tag right here, we have the closing tag, and then we have a bunch of other stuff inside of it. So that is an element. Some elements do not have an opening and a closing, and they just exist by themselves. These are known as self-closing tags, and you'll probably see those with, for example, the break. And you'll sometimes see those like this, other times you'll see them like this. I think either one is fine. This is XHTML compatible, but I don't think it really matters, honestly. Whatever you prefer. The BR is used to set a break, so it'll show up as uh, spaces right here. But for now, we'll just get rid of that because we're not done talking about all the boring pre-stuff. <laughs> there are a lot of elements you can use. You can look up a list, but just some of them are the P for the paragraph, which is right here. There's a BR for break, there's a div, there's a button, there's an input, all kinds of stuff. Now one element we can do is known as an H1. This is an example of a heading and will change the way the text looks. So basically it makes it really big and cool looking. Now not only does this change the looks, but this is also used for SEO. Search engines and crawlers will use this information to decide how your page is structured and what to focus on. So what the web page is actually about, or what the, the title is, should go inside of the H1. This title up here, that's what actually shows up in the tab up here, which is also very important. There should only ever be one H1, but you can have multiple H2s. The P is used to describe a paragraph. We also have a span, and I'm gonna get rid of the H1. We'll do a refresh and we'll see these. So this is a paragraph and this is a span. They're very similar in nature, but the P describes an entire paragraph, whereas a span just describes a, a section of HTML. The span is going to be inline, so you can make just a piece of something a span. So to see that, what we could do is we could actually make this a paragraph, and we can make this last word a span, like so. Doing a refresh, you can see nothing really changes. So spans are just used to indicate a particular section. We can give it an ID, and then we can style it or give it some functionality. We also have divs, which can describe a section. So that might look like this where we can surround our content with a div that can be used to describe an entire section usually bigger than a span a span might just be part of a sentence a div might be an entire section of a page now you can also create lists so you can do that with ul or ol so ul is an unordered list and then each item inside of this is going to be li for list item 
So here's my shopping list. All right, so we got a lot of variety here and you can see this will show up with the dots. An ordered list, OL, is going to number them. Doing a refresh now, we got one, two, three. Next thing is we can create images. That's going to look like this. Image, source, and then we can put a URL. And then we can end it. Inside of the source, we can put either a local file location or we can put a web address. So I just got some image off the internet, doing a refresh. Look at that, it's a giant image. <laughs> We can go in here, we can modify this. For example, we can set a height and we'll set that equal, oops, probably put the quotes there. We'll set the height equal to 100 pixels. Do a refresh now and there we go, it's a little bit more manageable. Links are similar, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go down to the next line and say A, href. So instead of source, you're gonna have href. And then equals and paste a link here, such as the same link and then you're gonna close it. This one, you're gonna have a closing tag, and in between the tags, you can put your text. So we could say, for example, source. Doing a refresh, we have the source text, which we can click, and it goes to the image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a break here, and that'll bring the source down to the next line. Now you may also see an href with just a pound sign. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make a link, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. And this is often used if you just need to make a button that is tied to some JavaScript, for example, that might cause something to happen. So I'm gonna go back, keep that link there. Now when you're working with simple HTML, linking to other pages is often very important. But when you're working with JavaScript, you'll often create what are known as SPAs, or single page applications, S-P-A-S. -S. And in this situation, you might just have an index.html and this will render the whole app dynamically and things will just stay on this one page. But if you need to link to another page, all you gotta do is put the file name if it's in the same folder, you can just put the name, no prefixing, but you can also do a lot of different ways to navigate through your file structure, and you can look that up if you need specifics. So the important thing to realize is that this is all client side, meaning over here we can inspect, and we can see all of the HTML used to create this. So there's nothing secure about HTML. We can go in here, we can see it all. We could also view the page source, and look at that. Once we have an element, we can grab it in JavaScript. So if you guys wanna see that, all you gotta do is go into the JavaScript and do something like let my button equal document.getElementById, pass in some ID, such as click me, and let's go create a button to match this. So inside of the HTML, let's get rid of this junk. Here we will create a button, and this will have an ID, which will say click me. Then what we can do is save, do a refresh, see our button right there. Inside of the HTML, we can put a value here, such as click me now. When we do a refresh, you can see the button there. Zoom in a little bit. Inside of the JavaScript, what we can do is we can say my button dot disabled and set that equal to true. Doing a refresh, you can see now we cannot click it. So that is how you dynamically grab a button inside of JavaScript. We're gonna be doing all kinds of stuff like that in the upcoming videos, but that's just a little bit of a taste. Now that's all I got for this video. The next video, we're going to do a crash course for CSS. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the JavaScript side of this, working with JavaScript to modify the page and so forth. So if you liked these two lines here, you're gonna get a lot more of that in the upcoming video. So be sure to subscribe.